So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Hi guys, and welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be um, making a marinara sauce and I just wanted to bring y'all along because this is just one way that you can use up some of your your extras out of the garden you know that you don't have enough of to like put up or can or something but you got them sitting around on your counter you just have that little bit and you can always make you some really good marinara sauce or uh, spaghetti sauce pizza sauce whatever so we're going to be doing that today. And also, in that video, <laughs> I'm still in uh, the kitchen before it got remodeled and before we got this new stove. So you're going to see that. And then the next, when we go on, we're also going to be doing cooking the leather britches that uh, we strung up a couple of videos ago. And I'll put that video down below in my description box. If you didn't get to see that, you need to watch that. That's a really old-fashioned way to uh, to dry, put up your beans, preserve your green beans that they done years and years and years ago. But a lot of people are wanting to know, once they're dry, how do you cook them? So, that'll be the next part of the video. And in that video, you're going to see me cooking on this stove. So, I didn't want y'all to get confused there. But anyways, let's get started making us some marinara sauce and then cooking up them leather britches. So join me as we make a rustic marinara sauce out of remnants from the garden. And everything you see here is from the garden. I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil in my saute pan. The onions, the tomatoes, I've got about nine small tomatoes. The onions from the garden, it was a, what you might call a, a small to medium onion. I've got one little uh, leek that I need to cook. I love leeks, I think it gives things a, a really good flavor. I've also got some green peppers out of the garden and my little yellow pear tomatoes that I always use in salads and I'll just go out there and just eat them while I'm out in the garden but I've just got a couple handfuls here that are just sitting here and we're not going to be having any salad so I'm going to use it to uh, as a base pretty much for my marinara sauce and I'm going to show y'all how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to cut this little leek up, put it in there. It was starting to dry out a little bit. I had cured a bunch of them, and this one was getting just a little bit dry. So we're going to throw them in there. And uh, I'm going to take my scraps here in a minute. I'm sure my pigs will enjoy my scraps. Now I've got a couple of big cloves of garlic here that Mr. Brown grew. Our garlic didn't do real good this spring. This garlic is from... Uh, about last fall and uh, it's been in the in the pantry and it uh, it's held up real good but I'm going to use just one large clove here if you got small cloves you might want to put a couple of cloves in there or you can put more than that you put whatever you like and these bell peppers are starting to go the other way so we're going to put them in there. And that's what I'm talking about. 
you know, don't think, you know, the stuff that you got sitting around the counter that you didn't have enough of to either can or put up. Well, let's make us a, a good, fresh, rustic sauce for pasta or pizza or whatever. It'll all be so good. We don't want to waste anything. And this right here will make enough uh, for me and Danny. We can either have pasta with it or we can make pizza with it a couple times. We can eat it with breadsticks, just anything like that. So I'd rather take little remnants that's sitting around now the garden and uh, make something out of it so good than just to let it sit there and shrill up and go to waste, that's for sure. We're going to saute everything. We're going to saute our onions, our bell peppers, and I'm going to throw my little yellow pear tomatoes in here. And these are the only salad tomatoes that I planted this year. I didn't plant any of the little cherry tomatoes. I just tend to love these more, and that's just the only thing that I planted. Um, so we're going to let them saute just a little bit. And what happens is your tomatoes will start popping. And uh, I know you're probably asking why I didn't peel my tomatoes. I don't, I'm not going to peel my tomatoes, not even my red tomatoes. I'm leaving the skins on. Um, I like the skins. I believe that's where a lot of your nutrients are. So we're going to leave them on because I'm going to be using a hand blender with it to blend it up after it's all cooked. So that skin will be blended up and it'll still be in that marinara. I think a, a lot of the taste comes from the skin. So I tend not to skin my, take the peelings off of my tomatoes. So we're going to let them saute just a little bit. I'm going to season this up with some Italian seasoning, which is um, your basil and your oregano. There's a little bit of fennel in there. Maybe a little bit of thyme. I'm going to put salt and pepper. All the good stuff gives it such a good flavor. And i tell you what, the way this is smelling and looking, I could just put me some pasta in there right now and eat it as it is. <laughs> so fresh, so good. Just isn't anything any better as far as I'm concerned. Fresh out of the garden. And I always say, just season stuff the way that you like it. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, paprika in this. Because after it sautés just a little bit, we're going to be sticking this in my little oven, and uh, I'm going to get a good char on it under the broiler. We're going to char them tomatoes just a little bit. I'm using smoked paprika. We're going to go ahead, and I've just got uh, a pie plate here, and I'm going to put my mixture here in this pie plate because I'm going to stick it in that little oven. I'm not going to turn my big oven on because it's just too hot to be doing that. I'll put the link down below of my little Emerald Lagasse oven. And here they are. They just come out of there. They, they got a good scald on them under the broiler and I kind of just smashed them down a little bit. They cooked up really good, y'all. So now we're going to start making our marinara sauce. I didn't peel my tomatoes. There's nine small tomatoes is what I'm using. That's what was left over. and it's just, They've been sitting on the counter. We eat tomatoes every night. We put them up. So this is what I call remnants out of the garden. So... I don't de-seed them. I don't worry about I do cut maybe a little bit of the core out, but not the whole thing. And uh, leave the skins on and cut them up. And we're going to let them cook down. We're going to also season this up really good, too. We're going to put salt. 
We're going to call that about a teaspoon and some pepper. Probably about half a teaspoon or so. And I'm putting my, my dry basil and oregano out of my garden. Probably about a teaspoon of each, but you put in as much as you want. Now at this point you can go ahead and put you a little bit of garlic powder and onion powder in there. Uh, since the base of my marinara has already got onions and garlic in it, I'm not going to add any more of uh, onion powder, but I am going to put some more garlic. That was probably a good teaspoon of garlic powder I put in there. And we're still just uh, simmering away, cooking down. I'm going to go ahead and add my base tomatoes in here. This is uh, not just for taste, but it's also going to thicken my sauce up. But them charred tomatoes and the bell peppers and garlic and onions, it's going to give it a good taste. I've added a tablespoon of smoked paprika. You don't have to put a whole tablespoon if you want to. Just put a teaspoon or so. I love paprika, smoked paprika. We're also going to just let that uh, just cook for just a little bit. Now, I'll let that cook down just a little bit, and I'm going to add me a tablespoon of sugar. You can put brown sugar in it if you want to. Put some bay leaves in. And I've got some fresh basil. And I've got some anchovy paste. I know you're probably saying, ew, no anchovies. I don't like anchovies, but I do love using anchovy paste in a lot of my recipes. And Mr. Brown doesn't know that I put it in there. <laughs> um, if I make a homemade Caesar salad dressing, I use anchovy paste in it. And in a lot of my spaghetti sauces and stuff like that. It gives it a really good taste, y'all. And I just keep it in the refrigerator, the tube. Here it is. It's all cooked down and I pureed it with my hand blender. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this in a freezer bag and I'm going to put it in the freezer for when we need it. So that just shows you what you can do with your, your little remnants from the garden. Never let them sit there and go to waste. Make you some beautiful marinara sauce. So I'm just going to put this in my bag and put it in the freezer. Okay guys, do y'all remember a couple weeks ago, around July the 5th, we made leather britches, which is green beans that you string up and dry like they did in the old days. You hear that? You hear all? Oh, that's, that, that is some dry beans right there. Now I left them hanging up. I didn't put them in a jar or anything because I knew we'd be cooking them. Um, they sound like well, wind chimes, don't they? But yeah, once they get this dry, you just put them either in a, just a good storage, like a jar or something like that. But we're fixing to cook these babies up. I'm fixing to show you how to hydrate them and how to cook them up. This is a great way to preserve your green beans. It's the way they done them years, years ago. And I'm not sure how many cups of dry beans I've got here. I'm going to say there's four or five cups. And we're just going to take them off the string. I'll put that video link down below in the description box. 
so y'all can see how we strung up those green beans. And you're just going to take them off the string or the whatever you strung them up on, whether if it's kitchen string or twine or whatever you used. I just used a heavy thread. And they're easy to get off there. Of course, they did shrink, you know, because they dried and they shrunk, so some of them might kind of hold on to that string, but they'll come off there. And you just take them off. And if you're not going to cook all of them, just store them in a jar with a good lid or put them in a you can vacuum seal them or just any good way to keep them good and dry. You don't want any moisture getting to them because they could eventually mold just like anything else. Now I measure this and we've got, I had just a tiny bit over four cups of dry beans here. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to just... Uh, rinse them good under some cold water because you know hanging up there they got dusty and a little bit of dirt on them so let's rinse them and after rinsing them i put hot water on them just from the tap and then we're going to let this sit and let them hydrate for about an hour okay it's been a good hour and you can see that they've hydrated. They don't sound crunchy anymore. So they hydrated really good. I like to give them a good hour to, to hydrate. You'll have some that are a little discolored, but that don't hurt nothing. If you see one that's got some spots on it, just throw it out. But we're going to rinse this one time, and you can see how it's, they look shriveled up, but they're hydrated. But I'm going to rinse this one more time, and then we'll put them in a, in a pot of water and put them on the stove and start cooking them. And here we got them covered with water. You can put some chicken broth in there. I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm using bacon. You can use side pork, you can use hog jowl, you can use a piece of ham, whatever you choose to use to season your, just like you'd season any green beans up. I got me two teaspoons of garlic. The garlic is optional. And I'm even going to gild the lily a little bit and I'm going to put me a little bit of bacon grease in here with it. I don't ever, ever cook green beans that I don't put a little bit of bacon grease in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this up and we're going to let it come to a boil. And then we're going to turn it down and we're going to let these simmer for a good at least two hours. Because the longer you cook them, the better they're going to taste. It's been just a little over two hours, and our beans are done. And it's getting close to supper time. Now, you could go ahead and let them cook just a little bit longer, but we're going to call them good. They're good and tender. Cooking for that long, they're going to be good and got a good, uh, good juice in there with them, especially if you put a little bit of chicken broth with them. I'm going to get me a little bit out and taste them. This right here was uh, three cups of dry beans made this much. And I think what it will equal out to is probably three cups of dry beans measured out to about a half a half a pot of beans. Don't they look good? And over here I got me some fried potatoes and squash and okra going on over here. This is my mother in law's recipe for okay and I've got a video for that. A lot of y'all have already made that recipe and just love it. So I hope y'all like the video today. Making some good old leather britches. 
our marinara sauce. Been a good day. Glad we could be with you. God bless everybody. We love y'all.